for those that aren't aware of your background, do you mind, I guess, providing a bit of a background on, on why you started in sports science? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel like it's been quite a journey. So myself, I moved from India when I was 18 years old. Like I, I ran to a cricket school growing up. We used to play six hours of cricket. It used to be uh, strength and conditioning, skill work, games, a bunch of everything. I guess that was my first exposure into the world of sport and professional cricketers, especially a lot of those guys who used to play IPL, training with them as well. And when around COVID hit, you know, I had a lot of thoughts going on and I was thinking about what do I want to do with my career? Am I going to really make it in cricket? I don't think I was that good. So I decided to make a transition into studying sports science. And at the moment, Australia was the best choice, looking at Deakin being one of the best sporting schools in the world. So I talked to my mom and dad and just made the jump. So that's where everything started. You mentioned Daniel Jones and Taylor, who who also been some strong influences or mentors, if you like, that have helped yeah. sort of shape your your coaching so far. Yeah, so far I guess like especially Taylor Wogan and Daniel Jones. Yeah, I talked to them heaps uh, Geelong whenever I get the chance. I found a bit of time to chat to DJ personally. Had had a cup of coffee with him. So asked him about his experiences. Like he's he's worked in the NBA. So I think he was able to relate to where I am in that stage of career sort of sense. And he gave me advice as like, try to be a jack of all trades when you start, you know, have your eggs in multiple baskets, learn how to work in multiple different sports. Don't just lean on the strength and power, learn how to rehab, learn how to do conditioning, learn how to someone teach someone how to sprint. So have all of that spread out. And then once you get to a stage, once you get older, you get to a stage of career where yeah, okay, now I know this is actually what I really like. Then you hone in mm. on that one. And your previous years of experience of all the other things sort of help you guide through that as well. What was some of the the learnings that you got from going through that scorecard that you think could benefit some transition coaches? Yeah, I think there's a lot of, I feel like, especially since you got that data from a lot of different people and a lot of high-performance managers and people who already gone through that stage, you sort of build upon things like yeah, getting your degree, uh, getting your ASCA, programming, a strength and power program for a 12-week period, stuff like that. So I found it like, as to be a very good checklist for someone like me to especially tick off. Like, you know, you have these goals in your head, like, yeah, this is what I need to do to get to the pro level. Now that there's actual people who, yeah, they've gone through that and they've done it. And there's a, a it's just written out in front of you, like, yeah, these are sort of the things that you usually do and you usually get through to your career when you get to that stage. So I feel like it was a very good checklist for me to just have. Then from there, like that experience, I think it was with the soccer club we were talking about, you're presenting. I didn't expect there to be anyone apart from the president when I walked in that I saw a table and five people sitting there. So it was like the women's head coach and you had the managers and you had one of the club secretaries as well. So I was like, oh, it was good that I printed it out and I had five copies of it. It was exactly five. So I was able to talk them through the state. And it was also like, you have to be able to present the sports science, C information in a layman's point of view as well, so that everyone can understand, but also not to miss out on the key data points as well. I don't think I did it really well in some sense, but I feel like, yeah, it just got me like, oh, what it feels like do something like that, because I didn't expect myself to be doing it at such a young stage. Oh, well, it was effective. You got the, yeah, got, yeah, the role, yeah. got the opportunity and you got a budget to invest in some GPS units as well on top of that. So I think your ability to build a working relationship with coaches because of that experience will definitely put you in good stead. Final tip for me, mate, is the outreach as well. So typically in the AFL world, most of the roles pop up around October, November. So it's a good time to sort of plant the seed around August, September, because the clubs, obviously eight of the clubs are going to finish in September. Yeah. And usually everyone does their end of year review and they're planning contracts for next year around two weeks post their season. So if you're finishing in September, around that two weeks post, middle of September is when you do a lot of that review and, and exit meetings with the players. And then people go into off season mode. So it's a good time around August to just get their get a message out there to all all different clubs, as many as you can, yeah. whether it be an email, a LinkedIn direct message, and just a bit of an intro. And if there's any roles that are out there, how you'd love to, to put your hand up for that role, 